All right, how's everybody doing this evening? Are y'all ready to worship the Lord tonight? I didn't hear you. Are you ready to worship the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet? You know, I was thinking about this service tonight, and I've been so excited about worship tonight and being together as, as ministers. And the Lord reminded me in Luke 10, after he sent out the 70 and the disciples came back and they were all rejoicing and they were excited about how demons were subject to their, in, in Jesus' name. And I will remember, if you look at the scripture, the Bible says that Jesus said that's exciting. He rejoiced with them. But then he looked back and he said, but don't rejoice because demons were subject to you. But rejoice because your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just going to say this to us. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just lay every title down tonight and we just thank him because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that we are, have our names written down in the Lamb's book of life and we can start right there and just rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Amen. Let's, Father, we thank you for the power of your spirit in this house and I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do tonight. You're going to minister to people. You're going to minister to pastors and their wives and I thank you right now and we give you this time of worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Let all the saints of God say hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. You Pentecostal tonight. Let all the saints of God say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. We're going to get started. I'm not going to hold you long. But listen, tomorrow there's an awesome opportunity for anybody that's interested in uh, learning more about leading worship. My professor is here from the University of Mobile. I'm his graduate assistant. Tomorrow, man, we have a, a, a day for the district, and it's going to be a preview day. It's going to be a lot of things that you can learn about worship leadership. Pastors, you can connect with future worship leaders. If you'd like more information, we're taking a shuttle here tomorrow, 1130, headed all the way to UM, and they're going to show us a good time and free lunch. Am I right? We're doing free lunch, okay? Fried chicken. All right, here we go. Man, so if you guys like more information on that, holler back at you. I see y'all laughing. Y'all know that's Jesus bird, the chicken. Y'all know about that chicken. Hallelujah. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's lift our hands to the Father. Come on and just get your mind ready. There's nothing else that's important. There's no other reason we came right now in this moment but worship, worship the King tonight.
listen, can we lift up hallelujah in this place? Can we raise a hallelujah to the Father tonight? Hallelujah! Put those hands together. You know the song, I want you to help me sing it tonight. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. Oh, I feel Jesus in this place tonight. Come on. I raise a hallelujah. My I raise a hallelujah. Why? Cause heaven comes to fight for me. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna sing hey. in the middle of the storm. Sing it out, body of Christ. I raise a hallelujah 
some battles that you've been fighting, you've been trying to figure it out, you've been looking to your left and you've been looking to your right, but I dare you to instruct your soldiers, instruct your prayers just like Jehoshaphat did, and put your praise in front of the battlefront. Come on, put your praise in front of the battlefront tonight. Come on, lift it up, come on. We going in, we going in tonight. I made a decision, we going in tonight. I raise a hallelujah. Come on. I raise a hallelujah. Come on, sing it like you mean it tonight. Come on. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a
Just begin to give him the fruit of your lips. Begin to tell him how worthy he is, how awesome he is. God, we believe that you make things beautiful, Lord. Because you're wonderful, because you're holy, Lord God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made tonight. Yes, God. I am who you say I am. Sing it like you mean it.
And sometimes God will give you a glimpse of how he feels about you. You just can't comprehend how much he loves us tonight. And I know he loves me individually, but he loves us corporately. Thank you, God, for showing up tonight, Lord God. Thank you for loving us tonight, Lord God. Oh, God, thank you. We preach faith, but sometimes God does the exceedingly abundantly in our midst. Amen. God, thank you for doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, Lord. I thank you, God, that you used us to do it, Lord God. Our faith activated, God, and I miss, Lord. God, I pray, God, over the rest of this service, Lord God, that you would be the author and finisher of it, Lord God. I pray, God, that you would sanctify and set apart unto yourself, God. Every song, every word, God, that's said after this point, Lord God, we give it to you, Lord God. We dedicate it to you, Lord God. Oh, God, we might have came for form and formality, Lord God, but you made it about you tonight, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for making it about you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, the overwhelming, never end, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me, fights to leaves night. I couldn't earn, I don't. How many of you just feel the presence of the Lord in the house? Will you just lift your hands? Would you just give him thanks? Would you just give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords praise? Come on, right up. Lift your voice, church. Father, we worship you. We worship you, dear God. We magnify your name. We glorify your name, oh, Father God. Oh, the within us we bless your holy name oh god we thank you for your manifest presence in this house oh father thank you that you love us god you haven't treated us as our sins deserve oh god you're merciful to your church oh lord and we love you tonight lord we bless your holy name god do something in this house. We thank you for what you've done. But Lord, t the table has been set tonight. We pull our chairs up to your word. We want to hear from you tonight, oh God. Touch hearts and lives and every person in this room. In Jesus' precious name we pray. pray. We love you, Lord. We worship your holy name tonight. In Jesus' name. And the church said, why don't you take five seconds, find somebody next to you and let them know you love them. Amen. As we transition tonight. Five seconds. There's nothing like the sound of family. Can you say amen? How about Pastor Mark and this team leading us tonight? Come on. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, brother. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Part of my responsibilities as CE director is um, Hall of Faith. And it's a privilege and honor tonight to um, see two of our Soldiers of the Cross inducted into the Hall of Faith tonight. I'd like to present to you our first tonight, our 2019 Hall of Faith laity inductee, Benny and, Lin Benny and Beverly uh, Lindsay tonight. Messed that up already, amen. Would you let them know how much you love them? Benny and Beverly. your brother Benny would rather get a root canal than be up here. That's just the kind of man he is. Amen. Brother Benny Lindsay was born October 12th, 1951. He grew up in Dothan, Alabama, and Beverly grew up in Headland, Alabama. 
They were married November 24th, 1972. Benny graduated from Troy University in 1974, yeah, with a business administration degree. He worked in the hospitality industry for nearly 40 years, including owning a hotel management company that managed dozens of hotels across the Southeast. Benny and Beverly have two sons, Brian Lindsay, married to Julie, Bart Lindsay, who is married to Lauren. They have six grandchildren, and brother Benny has had the privilege to assist in baptizing five of his grandkids. Amen. Brother, Be brother Benny and Beverly began attending Dothan First Assembly in 1988 and served in many capacities, including kids ministry leader, Sunday school superintendent, and deacon. Because of his love for missionaries and the work of the Lord, Brother Benny has always been a st strong uh, supporter of missions and the local church. In 1999, Pastor Murray Kelly asked Brother Benny and Beverly to serve as interim children's pastor while the church sought for a permanent replacement. Brother Benny agreed to serve while continuing to manage his hotel business. The interim tenure lasted for 19 years. <laughs> while they served as staff members, Pastor Murray said that Brother Benny came, more, came to him on more than one occasion with tears in his eyes and thanked Pastor Murray for the opportunity to serve kids in the ministry. The Lenny, Lindsay's many years of faithful service to their leaders, their church, and their community is a testament to the quality of leadership they have exhibited over the years. During their time as children's pastor, they attended some 19 kid camps, some of which they were the leaders and speakers of that camp. They started a van ministry that grew to seven vans and an old school bus that picked up hundreds of kids across Dothan area. They saw literally hundreds of kids and teenagers brought into the kingdom of God under their leadership. Their ministry has been marked by many memories, um, so many memories that will last a lifetime, like one at kids camp when it was lights out not finding one of their kids only to find them alone, asleep in a chair in the chapel. That didn't happen anymore. No. <laughs> One time, a memory that Brother Benny holds dear is um, walking his kids back to the kids' camp, still under the power of the Holy Spirit that changed their lives forever. Memories, again, that will last a lifetime. Whether in business, arena, or ministry, Brother Benny Lindsay has always been regarded as a man of great character and integrity. One of the hallmarks of his life has been standing for what is right rather than what is easy. Willing to do whatever is needed to get the job done, he served selflessly many times behind the scenes and away from the spotlight in order to make sure the children were afforded opportunities to encounter the presence of Almighty God. The lives of countless children have been eternally impacted by the heartfelt compassion of the Lindsay family. Today, Brother Benny, children you picked up on those vans are now in churches and ministry all over the region. Today, children you took to kids camp are now full-time pastors and youth pastors and children's pastors. Today, children that you prayed with at an altar are now missionaries taking the gospel around the world. Brother Benny, it's true. Now, during your 19 years of ministry at Dothan First Assembly of God, you were always considered a part-time staff member. But there is no doubt that you have left a full-time impression and impact of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the lives of scores of kids. The legacy of compassion and selflessness will not soon be forgotten. Thank you, Brother Benny and Beverly Lindsay for your faithfulness and service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the Alabama district. Only in heaven will we see the full impact of your ministry. Church family, would you recognize the Lindsays tonight?
Amen. Choice, choice people. Everybody that's been at kids camps and served with them knows that. Tonight it's also a sincere honor and privilege to recognize our ministerial inductees into the 2019 Hall of Faith. This year's recipients are the Reverend Stanley G. Broadus and his wife, Christine. Would you make them welcome? Everybody liked you that much, huh? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Reverend Stanley Brawless was born October, excuse me, August 19, 1942, in Mobile, Alabama, and grew up in Crichton area. He and Christine were delivered by the same doctor. I hope not from the same mother. Come on. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just that's just a joke at Alabama. Roll Tide. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Pastor Stan and Christine went to school together. But we're... <laughs> this is a serious moment. Now y'all come to order. <laughs> Pastor Stan and Christine went to school together, but were not friends in high school. They started dating in later in years in high school and were married on June 3rd, 1960. They have four children, Steve Broadus, Danny Broadus, Chris Broadus Vaughn, and Tanya Broadus Lowe. They currently have 10 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. Pastor Stan worked in a paper mill until he was called into the ministry in 1969. At that time, he did not want to be in the ministry because he did not feel like he was capable of public speaking. But absolutely, he accepted the call and followed after the Lord with a willing spirit. When he first started preaching, he would preach anywhere someone would give him the opportunity. Pastor Stan and Christine traveled to various churches, and they would sing together, and Brother Stan would preach the word. This continued until their first church in Toxie, Alabama, Toxie Assembly of God Church. They have often joked that this was their first seminary course place of ministry. They were later asked to pastor West Side Assembly of God in Montgomery, Alabama. When Stan and Christine started pastoring West Side, there were 50 people in attendance on the first Sunday. During their eight years that they served, the church grew to more than 250 people. Can you say amen? They had several bus routes. They built a new sanctuary. They built classrooms, a gymnasium, a daycare, and was used with, for kindergarten ministry, and it was directed by the excellent ministry of Sister Christine. Under their ministry, the West Side Assembly of God people, many were saved and lives were changed. During this time, in April of 1977, Brother Stan was ordained with the Assemblies of God in Alabama. In 1981, the Alabama District, under the leadership of Dr. Valdi Lambert, decided to plant the first church, CP&D Church, in Gunnersville, Alabama, and they asked this couple to go and start it. Not knowing one person in Gunnersville, they went to the city with a willing spirit. They served in the capacity as pastor at Lake City Assembly of God, and on a Thursday night, their first service in Gunnersville Recreation Center. It was a small crowd, but it was a start. Later that year, they started building the first phase of construction. And I believe it said that Brother Stan never stopped building. Amen. Stan was among the ones that physically built the church and supervised the work. Since that start, Lake City has become a thriving church with a large sanctuary, office space, and a gymnasium. They also have one of the best kindergarten through fifth grade private Christian schools in Marshall County. While the Broadduses were at Lake City Assembly of God, Pastor Stan started a radio program through the church that is still on the air today. Throughout their ministry on several occasions, Sister Christine had been asked to share her story in book form. Her book, 
wading through deep waters was released in April of 2014 that this testimony of God's grace has ministered to countless, even some of you that are here tonight. During his tenure at Lake City, Pastor Stan served this Alabama district on many different boards and committee. He served the section of Tennessee Valley uh, faithfully. Pastor Stan has always been a great supporter of missions and has been committed to support our Assemblies of God camps and various ministries in our district. Words that have been described, have been used to describe Brother Stan Bromis, level-headed, committed, faithful, tenacious, determined, a man of integrity, a man of wisdom, a man of compassion, and a man of character. It's been said of you, Pastor Stan, by your friend John Loper, that if you have a friend in Stan Broadus, you have a friend for life, a man who will listen, who will love you, who will share his heart, and he will pray for you. Pastor Stan and Christine are now retired from ministry and enjoying a little slower pace of life. They reside in Gunnersville, Alabama. They are still continuing to serve as ministry opportunities arise. Thank you, Pastor Stan and Christine, for your many years of service. The kingdom of God is richer because of your labor and faithfulness. Thank you for your selflessness, your sacrifice, your example that you have set before us all. Tonight, we give honor to where honor is due. We hold you in high regard. And this body, your family, the Alabama District Council, wants to salute you tonight and let you know with all of their hearts, thank you, thank you, thank you. Would you join me? Let these guys know how much you love them. I don't know if I can follow that. I can't. What a what a blessing. Um, we wouldn't have made it, we wouldn't make it in our churches without pioneers that we can look to. And you know, we also wouldn't make it without laity, uh, like we just honored tonight. We all need that. Amen. You know, we're gonna receive an offering tonight. If our ushers can go ahead and get in place, as they're getting in place, not too long ago, we had a just a few months ago, we had a missionary come and stay with us, and we said, we have somebody we want you to meet. And so we took this missionary next door to an old lady. She's 81 years old in our church. And she said, hang on just a minute. She grabbed her by the hand, and she took her back to a room. And in that room, she had pictures of every missionary that we support. She said, this is my prayer room. She said, she said, I'm not able to go to Ecuador. But she said, I can go with you because I'm going to give. I'm going to go with you because I can pray. I want to partner with you to help you get there. I say that because when we give tonight, it's more than about expenses for district council. It's about the ministry that's behind this pulpit. Yesterday afternoon, we heard a timely challenge from Larry Henderson. I don't know about you, but I was very encouraged and challenged to do more for missions. Monday night, we heard a powerful message from our, our superintendent, Ken Drone, challenging me as a pastor to preach more on the coming of Jesus Christ. This morning we heard from Mike Allard 
Some of us, I looked around the room as he was speaking and pastors were nodding their head. And all of us, I'm not there yet. I've only been a year where I'm at. But some of you were nodding your heads and agreeing in, in the things that he went through and how he made it through and how by, by faith. And you were encouraged because of that. And you know, I don't think that even tonight we're not going to get any different from our general superintendent. And so as you give tonight, think about that. It's more than expenses. It's about what, it's about the encouragement that you're receiving. There may be a pastor and a pastor's wife that walked into this room tonight saying, you know what, if I don't hear from God, I'm done. But you know what, I believe you're going to hear from God. And I believe you're going to get the encouragement that you need. Because Paul told the Philippian church, he thanked them in Philippians chapter 4. He thanked them for partnering with him as he did ministry. And so as we give tonight, let's think about what's happening here behind this pulpit and the encouragement that you're receiving. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much that we have an opportunity tonight to partner. To partner with ministry that has stood behind this pulpit and challenged us as ministers to keep going, to keep working, to keep loving you, to keep loving people, to keep giving the missions, to keep preaching Jesus and his return. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that as we give, we think about that at this council. And, Lord, we worship you, we honor you, and we give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By your stripes we are healed. By his nail-pierced hands we're free. By his blood washed clean. Now we have the victory. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame.
Haven't you enjoyed Pastor Mark and his team? Amen. And Pastor Mark just became a father again last week, right? Yes, sir. We love and appreciate this Knollwood family. And if you would, Pastor, you and your beautiful wife, Angela, would you join us here on the platform? Yeah! Have not you and yeah, come on. That's job security right there. You know it. Haven't you enjoyed the hospitality of this place? Come on, give them, give them thanks. Come on, guys, make it awkward. Come on, clap for them. Woo! Hey. Yeah! Okay, Joe, Mark. Joe, okay, Joe. Mark. <laughs> Pastor Angela, thank you so much for your hospitality. These guys have been here just over a year, and then bam, district council. So some of you that, that have had it, you know, there's some pastors who've had district council. When I look at them, they turn their head. They don't even want to make eye contact with me. So I understand. Try to look at me, though, this for just a moment. This is just an expression of our appreciation to both of you. We love you. We salute you and thank you and your wonderful team here for the hospitality. Letting your house be our house for this week. Come on, let's give them a hand. We've got an announcement video while I'm moving down to transition for another thing we're going to do for just a second. Well, as a matter of fact, before we do that, Dr. Allen, where are you at? You, you want me to come down there? Well, I've got to come down anyway. That'd make it easier on you. It is so good to have Dr. Ehler from Southeastern University. Let me tell you, we love Southeastern, don't we? How many of you are Southeastern graduates or alumni in this house? Let me see your hands. All over the place. Wonderful university. But let me tell you, not only do they believe in ministry, but every year for the last five years, I believe now, they have given us the trustee scholarship to be awarded to one of our students which is a four-year, all-tuition-paid scholarship. Amen? It's amazing. Now, Dr. Engel said, Ken, we're going to give you this. You can award it to who you want to. I said, Ken is not stupid. We're going to let the team at Southeastern decide who we should award that to so that I don't have these looks for eternity <laughs> from parents who are hopeful. You know, come on, I'm Mobile, Alabama boy here. But would you welcome Dr. Ehler to this Mobile environment here tonight. Give, every, give him a hand. Right. Well, thank you, Brother Don. It's so good to be with you. This is my sixth opportunity to be with you, and I always look forward to the Alabama District Council. I love your theme this year, family. There, there is a real sense of a family of God. You are also the home district of Southeastern. We never forget that. 84 years ago in New Brockton, Shield of Faith Bible Institute was born, and we still, I have the incredible privilege of carrying on the tradition of raising up Pentecostal ministers and missionaries filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered with the Word of God to go out and take serious the mission that your superintendent charged you with last night. Jesus is coming back, Amen. and there's millions of people who need to hear and be ready. And as you are carrying on that mission we're equipping the next generation and you as well and of course the school's grown far beyond that this past fall 8,759 students at our campus at Lakeland, online at more than 120 extension sites all over the country. And, and the, the influence we have is growing like crazy, but we've never forgotten who we are. And this past year on campus, we've had a very special working of the Holy Spirit. Students have started gathering 9 o'clock Thursday evenings for a time of worship and prayer. And they've come out in droves, waiting in line to show up. And we had such a move of
take place at our, what we call conference every year, our Spiritual Emphasis Week in February, and it has been beautiful, and I love what I get to do. I have the incredible privilege of, of serving with 27 full-time faculty who teach Bible, theology, missions, and theology, and one of those is a, a child of Mobile. He'll be, he's here this week. He'll be with you tomorrow night, and that is Dr. Cedric Valerie, a product of Metro Ministries, and God has transformed me. He's such an incredible, Cedric, are you here tonight? There he is right here, Cedric, so he's incredible. And his story is so incredible about the work that God's done in his life. You know, we're called the Barnett College, named after Tommy Barnett. And the leader of Metro Ministries took him to Tommy's pastor school when he was 15 years old. And this image of him getting prayed for by Pastor Tommy, hands on him, never imagining he would be part of equipping the next generation of leaders. And Cedric goes above and beyond, like so many of our faculty. You know what sets the faculty apart compared to every school I've ever been a part of as a faculty member or as a student is how much our faculty love the students. They love Jesus. They know their stuff. I mean, our, we have the high, most published Pentecostal faculty out there. But at the end of the day, it's how much do you love students? And Cedric invests himself in students. He is a mentor to them, helping them to get ready to know that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them, understanding the scriptures, learning how to trust in God, and providing an incredible example with he and his wife, Sarah, and their another child on the way, blessed family, and what, what a gift he is, and all of the faculty we serve with. And, and we're growing this fall. This Friday is our commencement. Our first class of doctor ministry graduates will be graduating. If you got your master's degree and want to keep moving, I would encourage you to do that. We also launch a Master of Arts in Family Ministries this summer. Children's Youth Family Ministers want to go to the next level. And our original master's degree at Southeastern, the Master of Arts and Ministerial Leadership Executive Cohort, is larger than it's ever been. And just an incredible time. Now come once a semester to Lakeland for a live session online before and after. Do that, and you'll graduate in less than two years with your master's degree. Of course, we've got Master Divinity, and you can do it online, evening, so many other programs. And, and so many other programs at the university. We just launched the American Center for Political Leadership, led by U.S. Congressman Dennis Ross, who stepped down, retired. He would have been reelected, but said, I want to invest in Southeastern to equip the next generation of political leaders, not just ministerial leaders. And the growth, of course, is hard to contain, so we've got a new Welcome Center being built on campus, ready for occupancy this fall. And, and, of course, it's, it's just an incredible place to be and so grateful to be with you and so grateful to your leaders and, and Steve as well who serve as trustees and, and on, on our, our board here at Southeastern. And if there's anything we can do for you, please let me know again. My name is Alan Ehler, E-H-L-E-R, and we love you and thank you so much for being a part of what we do and the mission of God. Thank you. Come on, give him a hand. We love you in Southeastern. Wait a minute now. Be careful. That's from he had a bicycle wreck yeah, three weeks and ago. three weeks ago, and so, you know, hey, one you pedal, one of those guys, right. you know, right. so. Thanks to my wife for bringing me here. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Hey, listen, we're going to do one other thing, and I think you guys are helping me set up for this, correct? I'm going to ask Brother and Sister Lambert if they could walk over here and sit in a chair with me. You guys, would you escort them and help them over here? And, and I need you to turn those chairs around towards the screen. Let's make sure they can see the screen well. Yeah. Let's take it to this one. It's closer to them. There you go. Right there. Right there is fine. That'll work. That'll work. Have chair, we'll travel. You take that other one. Yeah. Okay. Now, I know you're getting close to me. He's like, I can't stand something I don't know about, right? Well, you were elected as superintendent today. We just didn't want to tell you until you got here. <laughs> I know, don't you start chanting, bring back Lambert, bring back Lambert. Brother Lambert, you know we love you and appreciate you and your leadership, both of you. And we, uh, we did something, the presbytery, and I'll read this to you from the state of Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, Office of the Secretary Resolution, recognizing Lambert Lake in Odenville, 
Alabama by Senator McClendon. Whereas it is with highest commendation that Reverend Valdi V. Lambert is recognized for his distinguished and faithful service to the Alabama District Council of the Assemblies of God. And whereas Trucks Lake in Odenville, Alabama, at, I won't read all the, the descriptions of the addresses, was named by the United States Department of Interior many years ago. And whereas the Alabama District Council of the Assemblies of God purchased the property on which Trucks Lake is located approximately 30 years ago. I think it was longer. And whereas Reverend Vaudy V. Lambert, former district superintendent and servant of this great fellowship, has faithfully served in many capacities over, those last, over the last 27 years, and whereas Vaudy V. Lambert was the district superintendent when the property was purchased for the fellowship and it has been continually used by the Alabama District Council of Assemblies of God for camps, retreats, conferences, and more. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the legislature of Alabama, both houses therein concurring, that we recognize Trucks Lake being renamed Lambert's Lake in honor of Reverend Vardy V. Lambert and his, for his faithful service given to his Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Alabama District. Be it further resolved that the Reverend Valdi V. Lambert is highly honored and commended, and this resolution is offered to him that he may know of our recognition. We have a video we want you to look at here, Brother Lambert, that they're going to play. You know where that's at. Keep watching. Come on. Part of the deal is you have to keep the trash out of your lake. Do you want to take a moment and stand and just... You remember Jesus told the lame man to take up his bed and walk. He told me to sit down where you want to. Thank you, Pastor Ken, for this. Could we go back and do it all over again? I mean, I, I mean, this this has been so wonderful. I'd like to do it over again. Anytime you want to. But my next move is heaven. <laughs> heaven is my home, and uh, we're all going there, aren't we? Yeah. Praise be to God. We're going to heaven. Thank you so much for this honor tonight. Lillian, say a word. She... Thank you. That's only in public that she's speechless. Would you stand and recognize this couple for their leadership in this fellowship? When you're the grandfather of the godfather of the Alabama AG, they let you sing on a night that they're going to honor him. So we're going to throw it back. We've been honoring people from all they've done in the past, and we celebrate what the Lord's going to do in the future, but we're going to throw it back a little bit. I'm going to sing his favorite song.
In and out of situations that tug of war at me all day long, I struggle for the answers that I need, but then I come. Become clean, and in that sacred moment, no doubt can interfere. Through his love, the Lord's provided a place for us to rest, a place to find the answers in the hours of distress. last time, okay? Because you know this song. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, And hearts are mended in the presence of the King. In the presence. Of
Hallelujah. Wow. What a mighty God. What an awesome presence. What a special evening. We're going to get to hear some really good preaching. Amen. You know, in the morning, do remember it, uh, we start at 930 tomorrow. Pastor Doug will be sharing some great stuff. We'll also be entering in a time where we come to the table together for communion. And I believe tomorrow can be a wonderful time for healing at that table where his body is broken and his blood is shed and we commemorate and celebrate. And then we will also honor those who won't be at the table with us this year, but they're at that table waiting on us to join them at the marriage supper. So you'll want to be a part of this. Presbyters, remember, 845 is a time of meeting in here. Do not forget to go by the tables, our missionaries. Make sure that uh, you go by their table. Make sure that you get their cards. Make sure you pray for them. And make sure you support them because the king is coming and he's going to call roll. Amen. Well, are you ready this evening? To help me give our general superintendent, Pastor Doug Clay, a wonderful, warm Alabama welcome as he comes. Would you help me, Alabama? Come on, stand to your feet. Come on. It's your house. Thank you very much. Thank you, God. Hey, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Can we do that? Let's give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. Yeah, amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. It's a privileged opportunity to be with here, be with you these days and uh, excited about what God wants to accomplish, not only in your life, but what you take from here to go back to continue to extend the kingdom of God. And so, thanks, Pastor Ken, for um, this special privileged invitation. And Brother Lambert, congratulations on having a lake named after you. And so uh, that is awesome. I want to bring a teaching tonight entitled, Make Every Effort. I suspect you would agree with me that in spiritual leadership, character trumps charisma every time. You don't have to have charisma to be a spiritual leader, but you do have to have character. Too many charismatic leaders have drowned in the shallow of their own poor decisions because they lacked character. I want to talk about maximizing your influence in ministry by making every effort to grow in character. Paul writes this to 2 Timothy to Timothy. He says, but you, Timothy, watch this. Certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose is in life. You know my faith, you know my patience, you know